It is certainly good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. We welcome those who have joined us on live stream. Your fellowship also means very much to us and trust that all is well with you and that you are being blessed. We're continuing in the Gospel of John. We're in the third chapter, which is a very, very uh, challenging chapter. Not challenging like hard, but there's a lot of very precious things revealed here. We're going to be in verses 13 through 15. As you know already, Jesus is the central theme of Scripture. And while that may seem rather obvious, throughout history, the church has had trouble with this, even in the apostolic day. That's right, that's right. Which means that this is a particular initiative of Satan against this. See, it is just not that people are weak. It goes, deep, goes deeper than that is that Satan is attacking this, trying to minimize uh, people's understanding and commitment to Christ. Christ is the foundation on which the church is built. Mm -hmm. So the church is only as strong as this connection with, yeah. with Christ. And it is built for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So if, Jesus, if God can't dwell in the church freely, I mean, it's just a useless in institution. Yeah. Jesus is the one in whom we're complete. You're complete mm -hmm. in Him. Colossians 2.10. There, there is not any resource you need that is not in Christ Jesus. He's, you're complete. Mm -hmm. And that word means just exactly what it says. You're complete. Mm -hmm. You don't need to get any resources from any place else. He's the means by which we receive from God. We, all spiritual blessings, they, they come from God through Jesus Christ, as Ephesians 1, 3 tells us. And we have access to God through Christ. See, I'm showing the centrality of, mm -hmm. of Christ. Be, because Jesus is in heaven, and we're on earth, that puts the accent on faith and believing. Yeah, see. Amen. That's why faith and believing, that's why you have to have it, because yeah. the head of the church isn't here, he's there. That's right. And you're here. Mm -hmm. And faith and bridges that distance. Mm -hmm. And believing, well, faith is the well, and believing is what comes out of the yeah. well. Uh -huh. It's like the water. Mm -hmm. Faith is to believing what power is to doing. Faith and believing is not the same thing. That's right, yeah. Faith is a noun, believing is a verb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So God gives you faith mm -hmm. so you can believe. Amen. <laughs> amen. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, amen. You believing isn't the result of testing things out and making sure they're true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Believing comes because of, of faith. Yeah. And faith is the gift of God. Faith, I think I'm coining a word here, but faith substantizes spiritual reality. Mm -hmm. It makes it real to you so that you don't need any more proof. Yeah, that's right. Someone says, prove to me. You can't prove to me. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't prove yeah, that's right. as men count proof. Yeah. Faith is the proof. Amen. If you're persuaded of its reality, that's your evidence. Mm -hmm. Faith is the evidence yeah. of things hoped for. So believing, of course, involves persuasion. You are persuaded, I mean, by that. Mm -hmm. A trusting, mm -hmm. dependency. See, all faiths, that's all wrapped up in, mm -hmm. in faith. Faith and the, the Gospels alone contain the word believe in its various forms, believe, believed, believing, you know, mm -hmm. in its various forms. Uh, 
121 times. That's in the Gospels only. And there's just a handful. You can count them all. You can count all the references to believing in the, from Genesis to Malachi on two hands, and still have a couple fingers left. Something happened when Jesus came that hadn't happened before. And so believing, the accent is placed upon it. There's five references to believing before our text, which is that Jesus said initiating his ministry. And after this, almost everything Jesus said, believing or faith was in there someplace. So this accents that Jesus inducted an era in which faith would be the most critical position yeah, uh -huh. and believing would be the greatest expression. Amen. Yeah. You want to see that. Mm -hmm. And you can't institutionalize faith or believing. Yeah. <laughs> you can't build a faith club. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it's just that it's just that kind of thing, and it's on purpose that way. Yeah. The only people that benefit from faith and believing are the saints, and the only one that gets the glory is God. That it's just says that's the way it's set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read about that. <clears throat> now there wasn't a lot of mentioning about faith in the old days before Christ. There were some people that did believe, mm -hmm. had faith. Hebrews 11 is about it. When you think of the billions, trillions of people that live, this is really a pretty small number of people. In Hebrews uh, 11, Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Joseph, Moses' parents, Moses, Israel when they crossed the Red Sea, and when the walls of Jericho fell down, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, mm -hmm. with certain other groups. That spanned a period of 2,500 years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there haven't been 2,500 years passed since Jesus was here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's just a small, yeah. prior to Christ, yeah. small sampling. Mm -hmm. But now after Christ, that's another story. These people that lived before gave God a reason to spare the race. Yeah, yeah, that's right. See? Mm -hmm. These people had faith. Yeah. That gave God a reason yeah. to not destroy the world until the Messiah came. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So they were just, oh, just a few can spare the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, just a few can bridge the gap. We've got it right here. Right. The scriptures right. tell you this. Mm -hmm. There were some periods of time just one person, like Noah. He's it. The world survived for 120 years because of Noah, period. Didn't even have Mrs. Noah in there. Just Noah. All right, we're going to cover verses 13 through 15. Jesus is still speaking with Nicodemus. He has just said... If you don't believe when I tell you earthly things, <laughs> and the new birth is an earthly thing, you understand that? Uh -huh. Earthly doesn't mean it's made up of earthly, it means it happens in earth. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is saying, if I tell you what is ha what happens on earth and you don't believe, how are you going to believe when I tell you about what happens in heaven? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of epistles tell you what's happened in heaven. All right, verse 13 to 15. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I'm not ashamed that's in the Bible at all. No man hath ascended up into heaven. You say, what about Nedek? What about Elisha? Elijah? No man hath ascended up into heaven. 
No one ever has gone up to heaven. In the IV reads. And yet no one has ever gone up to heaven. The Amplified reads. Now this statement is in view of what he just said to Nicodemus. If I tell you about heavenly things, who's going to tell you about heavenly things? It has to be somebody that came down from heaven. Nobody else ever went up to heaven to get some word and come back. Hmm? Enoch never came back. Elijah came back one time and that was to talk to Jesus and nobody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. So Nicodemus, you want to know about heavenly things? If you don't get it from me, yeah. you can't get it from anybody. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Jesus is accenting that he is the only source of, inf of the information to which he referred. If I tell you of heavenly things, and believe me when I say, it's your business yeah, yeah, right. to know yeah. about heavenly things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not to be ignorant about heavenly things. Yeah, yeah, and in most religious circles, who could care less about heavenly things? Yeah. It just is not common to hear people even want to know about yeah. heavenly things. Maybe that's why people have trouble with Revelation, because that's all about heavenly things. <coughs> Adam didn't know heavenly things. He was morally perfect. But we don't know of one thing Adam knew that wasn't have to do with the earth. Hmm? Someone said, well, he had fellowship with God. It, the Bible doesn't say Adam had fellowship with God said God walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Didn't say he had fellowship with Adam. My opinion is Adam fell the first, first time. He had a chance right of just a day or so. Maybe the same day, I don't know. Moses, uh, Noah, and Abraham, they didn't know about heavenly things. Enoch didn't know about heavenly things. Scripture didn't say they knew about heavenly things. Enoch knew about a coming, coming curse on the earth. Mm -hmm. Noah knew about a flood on the earth. Mm -hmm. Abraham knew about a land on the earth and a people on the earth and a deliverance on the earth. Uh -huh. They didn't know about heavenly things. Uh -huh. It's not because they were stupid, uh -huh. because God didn't make that known. Yeah, that's right. It took a while, centuries, before God could open up heavenly things. That's what sin did to the human yeah. race. Yeah. So people can talk about how man's created the image of God and man has all this aptitude. Man doesn't have any aptitude at all that counts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. So here's this long period of time <laughs> before God ever did speak about heavenly things. Moses, he, he did mention about heavenly things, Deuteronomy 30, 12. He says, It's not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go to go for us to heaven to bring it down to us? Any volunteers? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea and bring it to us that we may hear, hear it and do it. So Moses told you, look, <laughs> there are some things that we can't, uh, we can't dispatch anybody mm -hmm. to go find out what they are and bring back the news to us. Yeah. That's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying to him. Paul had an experience. He was caught up in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. He heard some things, but he wasn't able to tell anybody. There was no means to communicate. I'm showing you that there's only been one personality that has ever come down from heaven and revealed something yeah. pertaining to God's will. Amen. Amen. Particularly salvation. But told the heaven, when angels come down and talk to Daniel, talk, uh -huh. not many of them said anything about what went on in heaven. Mm -hmm. They reported what was going on. 
take place in the earth. Yes. Job seemed to, to, to sense that this was needed. If there, there was just a days, it was just like an empire. Somebody that could come That's knew right. what God wanted, to, knew right. what I needed, but but even he didn't have that. Amen. Paul said, "The righteousness which is of faith speaks like this: Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ again from the dead." Now, Paul was establishing in that text why salvation is not by works, lest any man should boast. So let's say that a person says, I think we're saved by works. All right, here's two works that have to be done. Somebody's got to raise Jesus from the dead, and then they got to go up and bring, first they got to go up and bring him down from heaven. Then they have to bring him up from the dead. If salvation is by works, that's what you have to do. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Moses said, who's going who's to be able to do that? Yeah. Paul said, who's going to be able to do that? Was only one able to do that. Yeah, that's the one you want to listen to. <laughs> so he that came down from heaven. Now Jesus, Nicodemus never said Jesus came from, down from heaven. He said, we know you are a teacher sent from God. You come from God. We know you're a teacher come from God. Probably like Moses came from yeah, God. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. He didn't say that he knew Jesus came down from heaven. Nobody said that. Yeah. There's no indication that Gabriel ever told anybody but Mary and Joseph about this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Came down from heaven. Jesus wasn't just a baby born. He came down yes. from heaven. Nicodemus, I'm going to affirm, Nicodemus didn't know this. Mm -hmm. He just thought he was a teacher. He didn't say a savior. He said a teacher. He, did, he just said he was a teacher sent from God. Jesus said to the multitude that whom we fed with five loaves and two fishes, he said to them in John 6, 38, I came down from heaven. Yeah. Strong words. They stumbled at the saying, John 6, 42. They, they, stu they stumbled at it. They couldn't, they couldn't see that. John the Baptist referred to Jesus, said, He that cometh from heaven. See, he knew. He knew it had been revealed to him. He came from heaven. Jesus said to himself, The bread of God is he that comes down from heaven. Gives life to the whole world. So that... No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down. Yes. So Nicodemus, if you want to know heavenly things, you can only get it from somebody that came down from heaven. Yes. You can't study this out. It had to come down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, that's a favorite saying of Jesus for himself, he refers to himself as Son of Man 84 times. How about that? Why did he, why did he do that? Why did he, say, why did he say Son of God? Why did he say Son of Man? By this he meant he is the chief member of the human race. When you talk about who's important, Jesus is the one. He's the one man Son of man. See, he's like, this is the only man. This is the only one made of a woman that's in this class yeah. that he's talking about. He's the son of man. This is the one that Isaiah said was a son and a child. See? He was a son of man. Now he says, uh, he came down from heaven, he says, and he's in heaven. Which is in heaven. Say, Wait, what, what's, that, what's that mean? Jesus lived in constant communication with the Father. Yeah. He's in constant communication with the Father. He told you, I only say what the Father told me to say. When did he tell him? Before he came? He was telling him as he was ministering. Yes, yes, amen. There was a sense in which he was in. Uh -huh. In heaven. Hmm. He said, I only 
do what I see the Father doing. Well, where's the Father doing? See, he's with the Father. Yes, amen. With the Father. And Jesus said, I'm in the Father who's in heaven. Remember, the yes, Father's uh -huh. in heaven. He said, I'm in the Father, and the Father's in me. What well, the Father's in heaven. Say, what the Son of Man, which is in... Okay, it's too hard to understand. Too hard. No, it's not hard to understand either. You're just a little slow. Paul said of the saints, he says, our conversation uh -huh. yeah. is in heaven. That's right. yeah. Philippians 3.20, right? Conversation, our manner of life. Our manner of life mm -hmm. is, quote, in heaven. Yeah. If our manner of life is in heaven, mm -hmm. is it too hard to believe that Jesus was in heaven? No. When he was on earth, see, this is just family talk now. Son of man who is, I came down from heaven, I'm in heaven. That's where my life is maintained. My fellowship is there. My heart is there, see. My body is here. I'm here too, but I'm, I'm really operating from heaven. Son, which is in the bosom of the in Father. In the bosom of the so Father, even that's right. He had made this that's right. great descent mm -hmm. to earth, there was still this mm -hmm. oneness that's and right. affinity that's that right. the that's right. always realized. Amen. That's right. See, Jesus, when he was here, he lived by faith. Yes, amen. I put my trust in thee. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And faith bridges this gap mm -hmm. between amen. heaven and earth. Then he says to, to Nicodemus, he says, Now as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now he's going to accent the centrality of himself and his work. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, Now it's important that you become somebody. That isn't what he says. He says, Me. Mm -hmm. The attention is put on me. The law didn't accent a person. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. It acts in a duty. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not a person. The law didn't say anything about Moses. That's right. Who was the most premier man there in the world at that time. He was the, he was the most premier person mm -hmm. in the world was Moses. But the law, the law didn't mention Moses. It wasn't about Moses. Christ's words are being said within the context of a necessity of a person being born again. See, that's what he's, he's commenting on that. The person can't accomplish their own new birth any more than they could accomplish their own conception and birth that's right, yeah. in the flesh. See, the law made nothing perfect, as Hebrews 9, 7, 19. So something else has to be done other than telling people what to do. Yeah. There's some, something else has to be said. You can outline how people ought to live. And you may think that's really nice. And, now Moses did that. Moses did that. Moses told people how they ought to live. You want to know how to live? Mm. Moses tells you how to live. Yeah, that's right. If you think it's not relevant, no, no. You'll be born again and you're in Christ so the righteousness of the law, mm -hmm. Romans 8, 4, can be fulfilled in you. So in telling people how to live, you don't need, need to bring Jesus into the picture. Yeah. God brought him in the picture, which means he's doing something more yes. than behavioral analysis. Mm -hmm. Something's more than that is going on. Mm -hmm. There is form involved, we admit. Uh -huh. Baptism is a form of the doctrine. But the power is not in the form. The power is in the operation of God. Amen. That's right. We don't have faith in the form. Uh -huh. We have faith in the operation that took place during the time of the form. Mm -hmm. As Moses lifted up the serpent. Now you remember the case, of course, but it's covered in the 21st chapter of Numbers. God had just finished delivering the Canaanites into the hands of Israel, and Israel soundly defeated them. 
And then the people, quote, journeyed from Mount Hor by way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. See, they're not, they're, this isn't the wandering yet. Much discouraged because of the way. So did they say, Lord, help us? No, they didn't say that. They uh, spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Well, the Lord wasn't indifferent to that. He didn't say, well, the poor folk. I mean, you say things, you say things like that when you're discouraged. But that's not, <laughs> that's not what the Lord did. He sent fiery poisonous fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. You want a gripe? You want a gripe? We don't recommend it. We don't recommend it. You want to murmur? You want to complain? We don't. I mean, this was a tough journey they were on. This wasn't a cakewalk. But, uh, Anyway, you see what God did. The judgment was so grievous that the people said, so they came to Moses. Uh -huh. They came to Moses. They said, we have sinned. All right, we're getting up. Something's going to good going to happen. We've sinned, for we've spoken against the Lord and against thee. Uh -huh. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. That's right. See, that's Moses, meekest man in all the earth. He yeah. did. He prayed for the people. Then uh -huh. the Lord instructed Moses. He said, make thee a fiery, it means a bronze, shiny serpent. Set it upon a pole. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, yeah. when he looketh, when he looketh upon it shall live. So Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld a serpent of brass, he lived. Right? That's the account that Jesus is uh, talking about. He lifted up, hoisted that serpent up. Now we're talking about a population of three plus million people. This isn't like a, the people on the block. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take some effort to get to wherever that serpent's been hoisted up. Moses isn't going to hoist it and walk among the people. He hoisted it up on a pole, and I don't know where it was located, but wherever it was, that's where you had to get. If a serpent had bitten you, you had to get to that, get to that serpent. And all it, now you could get healing for a look. If you just look. And it wasn't a glance, I'm sure. Yeah. If you just look, mm. you'd be healed. And it, it look unto me and be ye saved, yeah. the Lord said, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. And so they did, and they were whoever whoever looked, yeah. and only whoever looked mm -hmm. were healed. Amen. It happened. <laughs> Yes. This would require some quick acting on the part of the That's people. right. Now, there, there are snakes right. that if you get bit by it, you're dead within a matter of minutes, maybe less. That's right. So I don't, I don't know what kind of snakes they were, but they were fiery by by God's definition. They were fiery serpents That's among right. the people. That's right. So that required some quick acting. And Amen. sin requires quick acting as well. <laughs> Yeah. Sin is infectious. It's like it's like a poison. Yeah. And if you don't get to Jesus quick, then you're going to die. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now you see, you know from this that Moses informed the people because he was faithful in all of his house. He let uh -huh. this, let this get out. Here's what uh -huh. to do. Any anybody bit out there? Yeah. Don't go to the doctor. Find that snake. Mm -hmm. Bronze snake. Yes, yeah, Sister Vanita. Yeah. Uh, so many people want to put off till the last minute. Or later to be yes. saved, not You're knowing right. that tomorrow they'll be in an accident to die. Mm -hmm. 
And this is the same aspect of the serpent. That's right. The pole. I That's mean, right. Get right with God now. Seek Jesus now, because really, just like being bit by the serpent, you don't have time. Amen. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Right. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. Yeah, I never really thought about it, but it occurred to me that, that the Lord didn't just take the snakes away. Yeah. You know? Yes. So, yeah. There are certain consequences of iniquity. That's right. iniquity yeah. that there may be a provision for healing in life there, but it's it's not going to go away. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when the snake that God sent bit you, the, the venom won't wear off. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You have to get the remedy yes. from the Lord. Now, Jesus said, now even so, uh -huh. in the same manner as provision was made for those, sin would be addressed by a prominent figure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Somebody in particular, who, who like, a, like the brazen serpent, could catch the attention of the mm -hmm. people. It wasn't like he didn't like get one of the snakes and chop his head off and raise it up. Right, right. Yeah. This looked like the it looked like the but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus looked like a man, but he he, uh -huh. he, he was more than just a man. Uh -huh. More than just a man. All men go ahead. This, um, this thing about the it being in the in the image of the serpent, you know the it was sin is what killed us. That's right. Sin is what did it. And, and when he was lifted up, he became sin. Sin he, for he, us, he, yeah. He was the remedy for the thing that was killing us. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. Now later, Jesus defined what this meant. This didn't mean you lift him up. That's right. That's right. We do recommend that you do, but that's not what Jesus was yeah. referring to. John twelve thirty two. Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Then John adds an editorial remark. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Talk about his crucifixion. I will draw all men unto me. Well, what, what did it mean? Well, some people, their theology says God draws all men, but only some come. All men are all men who look. That's the all men he's talking about. I will draw. I know that people say the Lord draws people, but they don't come. But you cannot substantiate this with the Word of God. That's right. That's right. You cannot substantiate, uh -huh. if you think you can, I challenge you to do it. Mm -hmm. You cannot substantiate that anyone God draws sits still. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's not drawing. Uh -huh. Amen. That's appealing. Uh -huh. He said he draw, he will yeah. draw them. Yes. Before it, the, uh, any of this started, the Lord had already, he already knew who were, his, who were going to be his saints and who weren't. He had already put it, um, chosen who his people were going to be. And so, um, even before they were born, he knew that who they were going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, if Jesus draws everybody, then there's an innate trait in man to seek God. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the catch is man doesn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. God did appoint man uh -huh. to do that. But the drawing, I want to underscore this, that he draws people that are looking. Uh -huh. Not people who are not looking. Uh -huh. Brother, I have a question. What, yeah. what is, I've never heard anyone say God draws everybody that only some come. What, what's the point in saying that? Oh, I don't know, but that's a common saying mm -hmm. in the group we come, we were identified with. Really? A, okay. Oh, yeah. Say that. Oh, yes. Well, I think it's to account for people who who don't believe, and that yet they they, they want to say that they had an opportunity that God did draw. Well, they said this is the theology. <laughs> yeah. Some people posted it on my on my Facebook. Yeah. 
This is the theology. God draws all men, but only those that come are received. But you cannot substantiate that God draws all men. That's not drawing. I mean, you just need to know what draw means. It doesn't mean, the, it means the person has an inclination to come. Say, they asked him, why do you speak in parables? And he said, he, he was real clear about it. Yeah. He said, he said, lest at any time they should repent, right? Yeah. And I would heal them. That's what he said. But he said, I don't do that. That's what he said he didn't yeah. do. It. No, and he draws. He, 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 there are people that he has drawn. Yes. They always came. Amen. Brother Abe. What I was going to say is I think in a sense... I realize this might not be exactly what the text says because it's talking about Jesus is lifted up. He did die, so he is drawing. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that in a sense when we lift him up and lift up the gospel, it draws people to himself as well. Yeah. <coughs> if we lift up a crucified Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a, there is uh -huh. a sense in which that is true. Uh -huh. But it's a crucified Christ is lifted up. It's not a solver of problems. Uh-huh. That's not lifting up Christ. Yeah. And that is mostly, all right, this is mostly what is being taught in the world at large. Jesus can put your life back together. Jesus, that's not lifting up Christ. That's not why Jesus died, to put your life back together. That's not why he died. He died because you were going to hell, and if he didn't deliver you from the yes. wrath to come, that's exactly where you'd go. He died to reconcile you to God. Amen. Then once you're reconciled to God, now you can go to work on some of these other things. Yeah, he'll, right. he'll assist you in some Amen. of these other things to work them out. Amen. But Jesus, yes, he's lifted yes. up as the crucified. Amen. As the crucified Christ. <laughs> multitudes want their lives put back. Together. Yes. Yeah. But this is the whole reason that, that he is identified with a, a fiery serpent. That's the whole reason. Yeah. It was the thing that was killing the people right. that took it away. That's so right. Jesus had to take away sin, but if he's not presented <laughs> as the one that takes away your sin, what good is it? I question that uh, unless we're talking about God pouring out, uh -huh. lavishing his spirit like he did on the day of Pentecost and things like this, I don't think you could build a large church by preaching Christ crucified. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. by, not, by not preaching Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. And when you preach Christ crucified, heaven kicks into yeah, gear. Yeah, that's right. This is how God wants Jesus to be known. Yeah. As someone who gave his life yes, amen. that we might live yes. unto him. That's how, and, and Paul said this. Mm -hmm. He said, we preach Christ crucified. Yes. He's not a worldly Christ. Yes. Yes. He, he's not a Christ of the world. He's not like a champion yeah. uh -huh. or a hero. Amen. That's not what we preach Christ crucified, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. Now, he signified the effect of this. To the Galatians, he said, I am, to the Corinthians, I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. Now that is an interesting thing because he, he didn't say anything to them about some of the, like second coming of Christ, the intercession of Christ. Some, he didn't say much about this because Corinth had trouble with crucifying the flesh. There's a lot of flesh yeah, yeah. in Corinth. Yeah, yeah. And Christ crucified. See, that had to be preached. Yeah, that's right. And I'm determined not to know anything among you save Christ and him crucified. See, uh -huh. that's where he, he was lifted up in his crucifixion. And here that draw, attention is drawn. Yeah. So you look to Christ as one that was <coughs> crucified yes. Amen. in our place. Yeah. Scripture said he was made to be sin for us. Yes, amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, which is, uh, that'll, that'll challenge your thinking. He was made to be sin. Yes. See, when Jesus was born, uh -huh. he was God manifest in the flesh. That's right. 
when he died, he was sin yes. manifest Amen. in the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to see him that way. Yes. And when you do, it'll convict you. Amen. You mean that's what, yeah, you sin, even if it was, even if you only sinned once, which, yes. <laughs> come now, yeah. you've sinned a lot more than that. But even if you sinned once, uh-huh. it still required Christ to be made sin. The number of times you said isn't the point. Mm-hmm. And when you see Christ mm-hmm. paying your debt, mm-hmm. and it was not easy at all for him to pay, mm-hmm. it will convict you. And once you get your eyes fancied on Christ, mm-hmm. I won't go this far. If Jesus didn't draw you, he'd scare you. It'd scare you to consider Christ paying your penalty. Yeah. But see, soon, as soon as he, soon as the crucified Christ catches your eye, yeah. That's right. he'll, he'll draw you in. Amen. You'll come. Mm. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. But you got to look at him before you yes. do. He'll draw you in. And Jesus was made a curse. He has made a curse. Made a curse. Made a curse. Mm wasn't cursed, he's made a curse. Right. Galatians 3.13. So the cross is mentioned mm-hmm. nine times in the epistles, and it's always a central mm-hmm. consideration. His death was not an end of itself, but it was a, it was a basis for his ongoing ministry. He will not leave this drawing mm-hmm. to men. We're, you're not able to present it adequately. Mm-hmm. He'll send ministers mm-hmm. where he wants them to go. Mm-hmm. Maybe Macedonia. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Corinth. I've got much people in this city. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Seleucia and Cyprus and Salamis and Paphos and Perga and Antioch and Pisidia where Paul and mm-hmm. Barnabas went. See, he's... He sent messengers out who drew attention That's right. to Christ. The lifting up of Jesus on the cross was necessary for sin to be judged, and nothing could go any further. Nothing could proceed any further in the matter of salvation until sin was judged. Amen. Amen. And until sin was put away. Uh-huh. Nothing further could be done. Why? Because God sin actually does offend God. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's why Jesus had to take it away. Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah, we, could have, we could never really love Jesus unless this, ha- unless this happened. We could have never really loved him. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So, That's exactly you right. If Christ crucified, how can anybody love Jesus? He yeah. says, we love him because he first loved us. The great love. We would yeah. have loved us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to add real quick, I, I think preaching Christ crucified involves more than just talking about how he died by crucifixion. It involves why. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Amen. It was, it, was, uh, yeah. it was to bear sin. It was as an mm-hmm. atonement. Amen. Yeah. Which, by the way, that, that mm-hmm. tends to be the stumbling block. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Jesus, lots of people think Jesus just died like as a martyr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, but that that's not particularly offensive to the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but to preach that Christ died for sin, now yeah. that that becomes the mm-hmm. stumbling block. Amen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. See, God is offended by sin, which required this drastic mm-hmm. measure. You've heard people say things like. Even if you were the only one, Christ would have died for you. This is nonsense. That's this right. is not true. That's right. Isaiah the prophet records how God told the son, Israel is too small. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, Israel is too small to justify sin in you to earth. I'm going to give you the Gentiles That's too. Right. See, so that puts the light to this other. Jesus wasn't looking for like one person. That's right. The children of the barren is going to be more than the children 
because I'm married. Yeah. See, so I'm, my persuasion is there's going to be a lot more people in heaven than in hell. Yeah, yeah, amen. So I don't see how that could happen. Well, do some thinking now. Yeah. You got one third of the human race died in infancy. That gives us a yeah. pretty good jump on things right there. Then you got the latter harvest is going to be a whole lot bigger than the initial harvest. Yeah. You got that. Yeah. See, there'll be more. God's going to be glory. Salvation is going to glorify God, not by how few people were saved, yeah. but how many were saved. Yeah. So the drawing accounts for them coming to Christ. They were drawn to him. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That, I always like that, those words, that, you know. Why was Jesus lifted up and drawing all people? That, in order that, yeah. whosoever believes in him should not perish. Yes. That, so, some words that so that, or, or then, this is the result of believing on Jesus. In Jesus, whose vicarious death has been proclaimed, when you believe on him, you're taken out of the cursed category. Like immediately. You're taken out of it. You're not, you're going in the category, not condemned. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That's why he was lifted up. That's why he draws all men unto me. So you could, so this could happen to you. Believing on Jesus is not guaranteed to correct injustices. Yeah, uh -huh. no, it's not, that's not what it was for. Does it guarantee that your dreams will be fulfilled, which has become fashionable for people to talk about that. Yeah. People are too idle, that's why they got so many dreams, yeah. you know. Yeah. He didn't die to guarantee that all the sick would be healed. Mm -hmm. well, if God wanted to heal all the sick, he could heal all the sick. Yeah. Without any kind of trouble at all. Even the apostles healed That's right. And it wasn't to resolve five financial difficulties. That's not why Jesus died. If you just go to Moses, he'll help you with all of that. Yeah. That such things as all this take place, we don't deny. Yes. Yeah. God can do all these things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're talking about why Jesus died. Yeah. That's not why he died. Why? Because sickness doesn't alienate you from God. Yeah, yep. I know there's people that teach that healing was in the atonement. But if that's true, then sickness alienates you from God. I'm yeah. telling you, sickness does not drive a wedge between you and God. That's right. You don't have to be reconciled to God because you were sick. Mm -hmm. Or because you were poor. Yeah. It's because you sinned. Amen. That's why. Yep. That whosoever, <laughs> it means everyone, mm -hmm. is not so, so, that, so that if any of the men believe. <laughs> you know? Some people would like it if it said that, but uh -huh. it doesn't. It says whosoever. That's right. If you can, if you can end up coming to Christ, mm -hmm. It's because you were drawn yes. by Christ. Uh -huh. And he that comes to me, Jesus said, I'll in no wise cast Amen. away. Amen. No, I'll not do it. Yes. You can get to Jesus, yeah. you're safe. That's right. <laughs> Amen. He won't say, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus was lifted up, see? Mm -hmm. So that he could be seen in the capacity of a Savior. Uh-huh that did with sin what needed to be done. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now if you can't come to Jesus, when he, di when he died, he bore our sins in his body uh -huh. on the tree, right? Yes. 1 Peter 2.24. Yeah. But when that body came out of the grave, mm -hmm. <laughs> there weren't any sins in that body, let me tell you. Amen. He took them away. That's right. They weren't there anymore. So everyone, whosoever is everyone, mm. Everyone who believes, yes. I'll say it another way, everyone who has faith in me, 
Everyone who trusts in me. Everyone who's believing in me. Everyone who commits himself to me. Everyone who looks up to me. Everyone who cleaves to me and trusts me and relies on me. That's how the Amplified Bible puts it. If that's what you're doing, you're safe. Yes, amen. Lexically, or from the standpoint of language, believe means to think to be true, to be persuaded of, to credit, place confidence in, be convinced of. Well, you know, it goes, it, that's not a really adequate, that's just a dictionary definition. But there's no doubt in believing. Yeah, that's right. Amen. There's no hesitancy yes. in believing. There's no reluctance uh -huh. in believing. There's trust, yes. reliance, confidence. Mm -hmm. And it all has come because of attention. Attention was given to Christ yes. and Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. this, is how, this is how God thinks about this matter now. You may not be able to present a good record, you know, of what all you've done and all that. I can't, I can tell you. I would, I would hate to stand before God and just have to present what I've done, you know. I'd, but if, if you have made it to Christ, and you've trusted in Christ, and you've cast your lot with Him, and you're dependent on Jesus yeah, to take yeah. you through, uh -huh. He'll not forsake you. Doesn't make any difference what you were before. Doesn't make any difference. That's right. Yeah, Brother Gibbon. You know, all those things you just mentioned, you know, all the trust and the reliance, and all those things those people that were bitten had to do, every one of them. That's right. All right, they had to trust that if they would make the effort to get there, they would be healed. Yeah. And every single one that did it was healed. That's Everyone. right. But see, the ones who doubted and said, oh, there's not a serpent somewhere, they died. They died. They died. They had to trust that God would sustain them while they made the journey. That's yes. right. Yeah. See, that's another thing about the Lord. Uh -huh. Once you actually commence making your way to Christ, God guarantees that Satan's not going to stop Amen. you. Amen. That's right. You got to believe that. Now you got to believe that because sometimes it seems like you're not going to get there. There's been people that maybe they think I'm not going to get there. No. Once He draws you, see, you're on your way. Amen. You're going to make it. Amen. Yeah, he, he, he'll call the tempter off. Let him go. Yes. How did the blind man find the pool? Yeah. <laughs> how, did the, how did the lame man get up off his bed and walk? Yeah. This, yeah. This, is an ex, this is an explanation of how you got to Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It wasn't because you were, had a lot, a lot of tenacity, and that's why you did it. Yeah, it took everything you had, yeah. uh -huh. but that wasn't enough. Jesus had to clear the way. Yes. There were a lot of boulders in the way. Yeah. And we all know that it's an explanation of the progress that we've made once we came in to where we are now. That's right. Uh -huh. It's because he's carried us. And That's us right. All. Yes. See, he clears, Isaiah said he, he raised up a highway in the desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a high way. Amen. Yeah. And the unclean people... They couldn't even walk on. That's, right. huh? That's right. They couldn't get up on that highway. Uh -huh. So what did God? He made you clean. Yes. <laughs> you got on the highway, uh -huh. and He said, "Whoever's walking on this highway will not err." Yeah, amen. And what it says? Yeah, amen. Isaiah thirty-five eight. They'll not err. Mm -hmm. You'll never make a mistake yeah. while you're following Jesus, amen. or while you're on this highway. Uh -huh. This is just the way, kind of way it is. Mm -hmm. The only way is for Satan. Now he's he's on the side. Yeah. He can't get up on the highway. Satan can't get up on the highway. Yeah. But he can get on the side, try and holler you down, you know. Yeah. Like Sand Ballot and Tobiah That's in the right. plains of Ono. Yeah. Come on down, come on down, Nehemiah. And Nehemiah said, We're not coming down. That's, right. That's what you say when Satan tries to lure you off the road, you just say, No, we're not we're not leaving this place. Yeah. Took me too long to get here. Yeah. I'm not leaving now, Amen. and there's nothing Satan can do about That's it. Because right. God, like, chains Satan so he can't get up on that highway. Amen. Although he'll make you think he can. He'll look like he's right there. You know, <laughs> look like he's right there. If you're walking close to the edge, it'll look like he's going to get you. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
to make for the center of the road, brethren. Make for the center of the road. So he's not going to perish. It's a promise. He'll not perish. Now you'd be surprised at the number of Christians that think they just may perish. They're not sure. And I don't condemn them, because I, so most of us were in that state, we weren't really that sure. But see, you can have the full assurance of faith. Hmm? The full assurance of hope. And as you grow, you become more yes. yeah. confident. And the more confident, the harder it is for Satan to get you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See, because you know, you, you, you're confident, yes. you're bold. Uh -huh. You can stand up and say, nobody on the boat's going to be lost. You've got to have some confidence yeah. to say something like that. Yeah. That, in effect, is what Jesus was saying here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eternal life, but they'll have eternal life. The expression eternal life occurs 26 times in Scripture, never prior to Matthew. Life eternal occurs four times, never prior to Matthew. Life everlasting occurs four times, never prior to Matthew. Everlasting life occurs 11 times, once prior to Matthew and Daniel. Life evermore occurs one time in Psalm. Length of days forever and ever is found in Psalm 21.4. Preserving one even forevermore is found in Psalm 121.8. Live forever is found in John 6.51. Now there's at least 41 references to, to actually living forever. Eternal life. This is a divine privilege given to people who believe on Jesus. They'll have eternal life. Not eternal existence. People are damned going to have eternal existence. <laughs> but that, that, you don't want that state. Eternal life, there's a, we call it reciprocity between God and man. You'll be, you'll be in a to and from relationship to God through Christ, you'll be with Christ. No interruptions. Is that going to be something? Amen. No interruptions. No telephones. Oh, I, may, I kind of get excited just thinking about it. See, life is filled with a lot of interruptions from external interruptions to temptations to fiery darts that Satan throws in your mind. You've got to purge them out. Eternal Peaceful life, productive life, have eternal life. And Jesus defined eternal life. He, de he even defined it. And he, in talking with God, he defined it. He said, this is life, eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, and thou hast sent. A pretty concise definition. That they might know thee, know as in husband knows wife. No, as in experience the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Amplified Bible says this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. As you know God as he is. Now Moses was introduced to the hinder parts yeah, right. uh -huh. of God, right, in Exodus 34. And there was a lot there, and that was just the afterglow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're talking about face to face. Yes, amen. See? No God. Mm -hmm. and what salvation does, it acquaints you with God, with whom salvation is targeted to suit you to live forever with the Lord. So, see, it's, it behooves you to be acquainted with Him. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace, as Eliaphaz said that to Job. Acquaint now thyself and be at peace. And if you'll notice, the more familiar you are with God, the more peaceful you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Amen. notice that? Mm -hmm. This will happen. You, as you sense you're in the presence of God, it, it has a calming mm -hmm. 
effect on the spirit and the thought of it being eternal life mm -hmm. where we'll study war no more Amen. this is not knowledge that's received that is uh, developed mm -hmm. you don't develop this knowledge it's given to you yeah, that's right. see there's a difference mm -hmm. we know the son of God is come and hath given us 1 John 5, 20, and hath given us to, to know him. See, that's, Jesus is acquainting us with God. He is the divine expositor yes. of God. And eternal life is knowing God. So you're as alive as much as to the degree you know God. Amen. Alive again, meaning able to respond See, there are people that are comatose, you know. Here's parts of their body are working, but they're not like they don't work or anything like that. They can't respond. There's spiritual states like this where the person is, is alive, but they, there's not a lot of response. But in glory, it's not going to be that way. Amen. Eternal life is going to flower out. You got it in the bud. In, you got it in the eternal life in the bud. Now, boy, and it's good already. It's good already. Amen. Just in the bud. Wait till it flowers out. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get this? By coming to Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's life for a look. Mm -hmm. What an exchange. Yeah. Life for a look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. The Knowledge of God is the well from which you draw. Mm -hmm. Your benefits are in that well. Mm -hmm. He has given us all things that pertain to life in God, and it's through the knowledge of Him. See? Uh -huh. So knowing God is it's like as the well from which you get everything, mm -hmm. which means God is disposed yes. to share what He has with those who know Him. Amen. See? This is how God is. So press in. Get close. Amen. Get close to God. And this is God. He'll, he'll lavish it out. I mean, there's no there's no known maximum. Mm -hmm. There's no known maximum. Yeah. Riches and abundance and increase and all these kind of words are. <laughs> so this is true acquaintance does not come by studying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not against study. I'm a studier myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm not about to discourage anybody from studying. But knowing God is not the result of studying. Yeah. It's the result of revelation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Of God acquainting you Amen. with things that are too high. See, the, this, is, this is a higher kind of knowledge than scholasticism. Mm -hmm. There is a sense in which we set our affection Yes. Yeah. Set our mind and we look at him. Yep. Yeah. But he's still got to show himself. That's right. You've got to have your attention. Yeah. And I think we can say this, Brother Gene, that, that if, if God can get your attention, you'll get what God has to give. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And you won't get it without that. That's right. That's right. Mm hmm. So yeah. just, but how are you, you going to know heavenly things? That's what Jesus was saying, telling us in this passage. You're going to have to come to me to get this. And Jesus didn't say this, but he, he just as well as said it. And I really want to, I really want to give this out. Come, to, come unto me. Yeah. Learn from me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Be diligent to add to. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said, now, that's Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty seven says, "No man knows who the Son is but the Father, right. and no man knows who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom he'll reveal him." Right. So the question comes: Well, who do you want to reveal him to? Mm -hmm. Next verse: Come unto me, yeah, yeah, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. That's you're down. You're down there where <laughs> where the trial is. Come to me, yes. all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest to so Jesus is the only one you can get it from That's right. and he wants to give it how's that how's that for an arrangement yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. 
See, there's some billionaire people in the world, but they're not disposed to share their wealth with you. I can, I can imagine how many requests people like, you know, billionaire people must receive bushel loads of requests. But God never receives a request for blessing that's turned down. Not if it's because the person has come to Christ. So, I encourage you to come to Christ as, as fully and as unreservedly as you possibly can. You'll not be disappointed. Amen. You won't be. You'll not go away empty. How many times in the world you were convinced this or that was an advantage and you bought into it and you found out, oh, well, this isn't what I thought it was. Uh -huh. But nobody who's ever come to Jesus has ever experienced that. Yeah. Jesus is not only everything he says, he's more. Yes. Yes. And it never gets old. Right. Keeps on increasing. Mm -hmm. And when you come to Jesus, it's like, it's like Jesus is a million miles away. But if you, if you're, if you just come, you know, a half a foot, mm -hmm. you're on the come. Yes. You're on the coming list. And all your life you're making making progress. Yes. Pretty soon something will open up to you that you don't know tonight. Mm -hmm. Something will open up to you and you'll see an, a wide open door where you can make some progress to Christ that you had no idea about uh -huh. before. Yes. Yeah. And if you live to be as old as I am, you'll not pass a day when you won't experience. You know, there's, there's, another, there's another wide open door yes. here Amen. into the presence of Christ. And he's still saying, come unto me now. Amen. He's been lifted up. See, he's been lifted up. His death has fully satisfied God. Yeah. And when it fully satisfies you, yeah. the transmissions begin. <laughs> All right, any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Yes, yes Rachel. Because you won't have eternal life like Christ has. Mm -hmm. All right. Appreciate Amen. you thinking about these things. Yes. Rachel, Brother Aaron. About Jesus drawing all men unto himself. I think that is people that say, like you were saying, about God drawing all men, but only a few come. I think that's just uh, confusing the gospel being to preach to every creature. Mm -hmm. uh, but drawing all men... Uh, and they coming is like Jesus saying, "All that the Father hath given me Shall will come to us." Right. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. when he called, he called the disciples, called the apostles. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any failures. Well, he didn't want to come. I sure would have liked to have him, but uh -huh. he didn't want to come. And there also wasn't in, in the miracles. There wasn't any. Uh, uh, wasn't any mistakes made. That's right. It's like Jesus tried to heal them, but they they didn't have faith to receive uh -huh. it. Every every time he <laughs> yeah. healed, it, it it happened. It worked. Yes, yeah. it took place. Mm -hmm. but I think it was in the in the book of Acts uh, where it says he he perceived that he had faith to be mm -hmm. healed. Yes, Paul. Paul yeah, that. Paul perceived he yeah. had faith to be healed. Amen. Yeah. Yes. If, you, if you've ever been disappointed with your own level of mm -hmm. faith. And you feel as though it's a little hard to increase it. If you draw nigh to Christ, mm -hmm. it'll increase. Yes. Because His His grace, the grace of God, is I think First Timothy one fourteen, if I remember right. The grace of God was abundant with faith mm -hmm. and love, yes. which is in Christ Jesus. So, if you get in close to Christ, to where He's dispensing to you. Your faith will increase. Yes, amen. Yeah. Yes, Brother Jonathan. I appreciate, first, particularly recently, how we accent this, ex how Christ is exclusive in these things, <clears throat> things that he, that he saves us from, the things that only he can save us from. Like, no mm -hmm. one should ever walk away from Jesus thinking they need to get a second opinion somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
That's or right. That, or that he's like one of many competitors. You know, like you got like fast food example. The restaurants they sell the same product, but they're all fighting saying we got the better product, even though it's all the exact, exact same thing. What Jesus has, it's only He gives it. Only He can save you from this. Only He can give eternal life, and that's the way it should be presented. It's only here. Yes. Amen. And He's disposed to do it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. We're Amen. Here. Well, uh, God does call us to trust. Um, uh, trust to me, and you shall not be put to shame. To trust in the more unwavering and, and grow. Uh, I really like the, the one passage in Scripture where it teaches us to be merciful to those who are not, who are wavering, and merciful to those who are. So there's this balance of we stand and we are constantly encouraging people who, are, who, are, who we see are needing encouragement because we've all been there. We all go. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember to be merciful. Yeah. Amen. To be told you'll be received, that is a, <laughs> yeah. that's a no matter. You know, if you just, if you just look, that's you right. make a difference if you've been bit ten different places. Uh -huh. If you'll just look. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yes. In the past couple of days, I've been really thinking about the rest of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Entering into his rest, said, come to me all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. And, it, and it, the thought occurred to me that we're not just fighting just for fighting's sake. Uh -huh. You know, we're not just we're not we're not we don't just labor just just because it's our reasonable service and he's done many mm -hmm. great things. But we fight so that we can rest. That's we right. labor so that we can rest. Yeah. And this it was just a really fresh thought that's been in my mind that this struggle, this uh, this inward conflict and this and then all of this turmoil and it's there's gonna be a sea of glass. That's right. Everything's gonna be everything's gonna be calm. And serene and restful, and it's just, it, it's just refreshing. See, all these other things are just in between here and there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get past them, and then he gives you the he gives you the grace to get past them. Yes. See, you're not Amen. doing it in your own strength. Yes, yes. Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for your willingness to save, for your provision to save, for making Jesus accessible mm -hmm. to us. We thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.